138 miles per hour. That was the final recorded GPS speed on the UP6502 right before two locomotives and 55 cars leaped from the rail as it entered a curve, scattering twisted metal and iron ore across the Mojave National Preserve. So how does this happen? Train OUTS-1 of the 25th was a double-length iron ore train which departed Iron Springs, Utah with 154 cars bound for export out of Long Beach, California. There were only five locomotives on this train and it should have had more. The route the tracks follows are filled with long grades as elevation is lost all the way from the mountains of Utah down to sea level. The weight of this monster? 21,522 tons, that's over 43 million pounds, half the weight of the Titanic rolling through cities and towns with a simple crew of two that the railroad's been pushing to cut to one. After multiple mechanical problems along the way and a multi-hour delay in Las Vegas to try to fix the problems, the train again broke as it crested the long steep grade between Sema and Kelso. The overloaded train broke in half behind the 55th car and came to a stop in a precariously steep location putting the crew in a very dangerous situation that could have cost them their lives. The conductor replaced the coupler and attempted to shove the train backward to put it back together, but the insufficient two locomotives on the head end were unable to shove 55 loads backwards on the steep grade. The engineer desperately tried to move the train as it instead began rolling forward. Since the air was charging up through the cars, there was not sufficient air to be able to stop it as it ran away down the hill. The engineer jumped, saving his life, as the train quickly rolled faster and faster down the hill. It finally derailed at over 140 miles per hour on a curb just east of Kelso. Fortunately, the desert tortoise was the only life affected by this disaster. But where will it happen next? Your neighborhood? And what kind of hazmat will it be carrying? The residents of Duffy Street in San Bernardino would know what the long-term effect of overload of trains are on their community. It's been over 30 years, but their neighborhood still sits with open lots from homes never rebuilt after a train barreled off the curve at over 100 miles per hour, crushing homes. The derailment and subsequent gas explosion scarred the neighborhood forever. But 1989 was a fluke incident. Now these trains are a systemic problem, as an unhealthy obsession with increasing profits for Wall Street has thrown safety out the window. When trains are double length, Mechanical failures occur more often, and that is the main contributing factor to this derailment. Union Pacific is now bragging that they reopen the line in less than 24 hours with no hazmat or injuries. The crew will be thrown under the bus, and they'll pretend that it never happened. But as railroaders, we know the cause, and it will happen again, because the toxic drive for share buybacks will lead to longer and heavier trains and further experimentation with public safety. This incident, just like East Palestine, involved a common red thread excessive train links to give more money back to Wall Street.